tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened One, the Noble Dhamma Doctrine, the Noble Maha Sangha, the Disciples of the Buddha. Hello, dear Dhamma friends. Welcome to lecture 33 of our special Dhamma Talk series with Dhamma USA. I believe this effort by Dhamma USA is going to broaden the horizon of Dhamma knowledge among our community. We are so very delighted to have Professor Sivanagi Reddy, and I am confident that we will learn much from his vast Dhamma knowledge and experience. Please join us every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and Friday, 6.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time through the Dhamma USA social media network and some renowned scholars and experts in different fields to learn more about the current and modern topics about Buddhism and life in general. Kindly post your questions in the comment sections of our YouTube channel so that we can answer them at the end of our talk. So uh, just to give you a background uh, about Professor Imani Siva Naga Reddy. Professor Sivanagi Reddy uh, underwent four years of training in traditional sculptural and architecture at Tirupati, obtained a Master of Arts degree in ancient Indian history, culture and archaeology from Osmania University. Afterwards, he was awarded a PhD in history from Hyderabad Central University. In 1978, he joined the Government Service Department of Archaeology and Museums in the government of Andhra Pradesh. Over time, he successfully transplanted more than 100 historical temples and built more than 100 new temples all over Andhra Pradesh, as per the Silpa and Agama Sastras. He participated in many archaeological excavations and took up conservation of select Kakatiya temples in Telangana. He was conferred with the title Vastu Silpava Chaspati by the Padmashri Dr. V. Ganepati Stapati and received the highest award Kalaratna from the government of Andhra Pradesh in 2019. He worked as the director of the National Institute of Tourism and hospitality management at Gachiboli, and after his retirement in 2013, April, joined as the director, State Gallery of Art, at Madhapur, Hyderabad, and in A and in APTDC as OSD, Art and Culture, holding full additional charge OSD, Sila Paramams. Professor Reddy wrote and edited many works, a hundred books and 500 articles on the history, culture, archaeology, Buddhism, and tourism. Currently, he is working as a CEO for the Pleach India Foundation, formerly called Cultural Center of Vijayvada and Amaravati, established by the Ma Lakshmi Group of Companies. In this lecture, he discusses the story of Amaravati Stupa. If you're looking away to keep your mind focused and your spirits high, then this is the lecture for you. Without further ado, please pay due attention to achieve maximum benefit from today's Dhamma sharing. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May I begin? Happy to have you here, Professor Eddie. May, may I begin? You may begin. Yes. Uh, the most uh, respected, will, venerable, and uh, Sri Arenda Vijay Ratnaji and other participants. Uh, good morning to all of you in India. Good morning because we are in the morning. <laughs> so it is a very great opportunity at the outset. Uh, I would like to place on record my sincerest thanks to Dhamma USA. Uh, for giving me a very, very, very nice opportunity uh, to just give a small talk. You all are scholars, but I will, as an archaeologist, I will make a uh, small attempt to present uh, 
the story of Amravati. You all know that Amravati is a world-renowned name for its art, the Amravati School of Art. Again, the Amravati Stupa, the Amaraisura Temple, it is uh, very famous, the name Amaravati. But Amaravati was a very recent name. It is not ancient one. The ancient name is Dhanya Kataka, Dharani Kota, Dhamnakada, like that. It was mentioned in 3rd century BC. The very interesting story is that if you want to know Amaravati Stupa, it is better to visit British Museum London. And there is a particular section called the uh, Asahi Simbam Gallery of Amaravati Sculpture. It is in British Museum London. If you go there, you really feel, oh, what a wonderful sculpture. Where is it come from? Then you will know that it is from Amaravati. Then you will start uh, uh, start traveling from London to Amaravati. And Amaravati is very close. It is a small town uh, located on the right bank of River Krishna in Guntur district. 30 kilometers from Guntur and 45 kilometers from Vijayawada, the famous uh, cities of Andhra Pradesh and coastal Andhra. Yes, there are more than 100 panels like this. These were shipped, uh, uh, transported way back uh, some 100 uh, years more. But when the entire India was under the rule of the British, they conducted excavations, collected all these beautiful panels, transported to Madras. From Madras, they were uh, sent to London. Finally, they are there. Yes. Now, I think, yes. Now, next slide, Bhante. This is very interesting. Amaravati, as I mentioned here, is known as Dhanya Kataka, Damnakada. It is exactly a name. Nafna, Amaravati was not a name. It was a recent name. In 1798, the local chieftain has built a new township very close to Dhanya Kataka Stopa. And he named it as Amaravati. And the Britishers, when they came over here, the entire locality was known as Amaravati only. Henceforth, the entire site of archaeological site of Buddhism is uh, known as Amaravati Stupa. So this is the story behind Dhanya Kataka Amaravati. It was actually rediscovered. It was there since 3rd century BC. But it was rediscovered only in 1796. That is a very interesting story. Next slide, Bhante. Yes, uh, Kalnal Kalin Mekanji, he was actually a surveyor general who was working in Sri Lanka, but he was uh, asked by the British to come over this part of the country and conduct a survey. So he wanted to culturally map the entire coastal area. So he came here in 1797 and all of a sudden he came, he was actually surveying lands of gold mines and uh, diamond mines of the um, British res, um, residency. All of a sudden, he comes to know that there was an ancient site. He crossed the river Krishna and he found there was a huge mound. That mound was known as Lamp, um, the mound of the lamps, Deepala Dinne. And he is the, by that time, he also comes to know that the local Jamindar was actually excavating, removing the sculptures and uh, collecting antiquities, keeping in his own house. He went uh, to his residence. His name is Raja Vasiriti Venkatadir Naidu. He convinced him that it is an ancient site. You are not supposed to disturb it. Then he stopped disturbing it. And followed by, there were many Britishers who ex conducted excavations, namely uh, Walter Elliot, Robert Sewell, James Burgess, Alexander Ree, etc. And uncovered the entire Buddhist uh, site, uh, which yielded uh, what we call the existence of uh, huge stupa, then there are uh, many small, small uh, votive stupas and a good number of uh, sculptural panels, all those things came for the first time and, uh, to the notice of the Britishers and they sent it to Government Museum Chennai because it was the only museum where they wanted to display and after that they were sent to British Museum London. This is what we call the small story of rediscovery of Amaravati stupa. Next Bhante.
Yes, now when they excavated the entire site, they come across first a small stupa. This small stupa, I think now you can also see it is all around and cast with the beautiful sculptural panels depicting the miniature stupa of Amaravati. You can locate all around, there are super panels only. These are panels all around the encased it. And finally, it was decorated in hemispherical way. And on the top, there will be a parasol, etc. And they noticed this stupa. And after that, they continued their excavations. Next month, this is a votive stupa just to build. Yes, these are some of the things that they come across while digging at the site and you can notice at the back there is a big course that is actually the main uh, the uh, dome portion of the main stupa and you come to notice that these are scattered pieces of what you call the gateway the railing the uh, other sculptures and case to the stupa next Yes, this is again part of the excavation. So now you can see on the left side, on the left side, you have series of stumps planted. That is what we call the upright pillars of the Mauryan period uh, a, a, around the stupa. You can notice that the stupa just is coming up. And while they go digging, they also found many number of uh, other structures associated with uh, the stupa. Next. Yes, this is a part of the excavations where you can notice that the antiquity of the site could be dated to even pre-Mauryan, that is pre-3rd century BC. We have got what we, what, what we can do is 3rd century BC, even up to 5th century BC evidence was also noticed. This is only to show that the site uh, belongs to 5th century BC. Next one. Yes, this is actually the site when uh, Alexander Re has excavated it. Now you can see it was described that the stupa was very, very grand here, but nothing could be found because of the pillage or the damage of the local chieftain. He removed all the bricks and used for his new construction so that ultimately this is the thing that we come across uh, when the British was excavated. That is, there is a circular... Uh, a mound that circular mound is actually the dome portion and below to it is the circumambulatory path now you can see at the moment uh, which is av available up to two meters height only next one yes this is a section of the dharana in 1963 not necessary please next next please next please next next these are, uh, yes, now you can also see what we, the archaeologists found was varieties of small pieces, uh, actually pottery, then coins, then otherwise the small, small label inscriptions and uh, en engravings of uh, uh, small, small sculptures, which denote that the pre-Mauryan existence, the existence of this topa before Asoka, uh, Asoka's time. This is what we wanted to establish. Amaravati Stupa, the Dhani Kataka Stupa has its beginning due even prior to Asoka's time. Next. Next, next, please. These are the excavations thing. Yes, this, this is, this clearly attests that it belongs to uh, 5th century, continued during the 4th century BC, continued even 3rd century BC, and it continued up to 8th century AD in sequence after which a, uh, a what we call the site uh, started uh, uh, decaying, in the sense deserted. Now, you can see a well, then again post holes, etc., which reveals that there was a habitation before and after the Mauryan age. Next one. Next, next. Some ceilings we could notice there. Yes, these are some of the sculptures and the antiquities, beautiful relic caskets that we recovered from excavations over a period of time. And a series of excavations for 10 times were done right from 1798 to and even still 1990, excavations were continued over a period of time and a good number of antiquities were recovered, which reveal the fact that uh, the beginnings of Dhani Kataka Amaravati Stopa had uh, the 3rd century BC and continued up to uh, 
the 14th century AD. These sculptures denote the three phases of Buddhism, namely Theravada, then Mahayana from 1st century AD, then from 4th century AD onwards, Vajrayana phase. So, the site at Dhanyakataka or Amaravati flourished uh, for nearly 1000 years and witnessed what to call the existence of the three phases of Buddhism, Theravada, Mahayana and Vajrayana. Next. I will explain the sculptures in a later. Yes. And uh, these are some of the things that you can come across. This is a ceiling. A local ivory seal has come out. And these are some of the beads, bangles, earrings, etc., which denote that the flourishing state of uh, Dhanikataka Amravati as what we call not only as a habitation, it was also a port town, it was also a city, it was also what to call a seat of power, unless otherwise we couldn't get the ivory seal there. And we come across uh, many more such uh, things in the such subsequent uh, slides. Next one. Yes, this is at the moment what you come across. Just one or two re uh, conserved uh, a small chaitya is there, uh, elliptical chaitya. There is a votive stupa. Everything is there. So, sir, next. This is a drainage pit. All right, the drainage datable to uh, the Satavahana period, that is 2000 years old drainage system was there. Sir, next one, next one. This what I mean, yes. Very interestingly, the holy relics of Lord Buddha were recovered in 10 caskets. These are crystal caskets. These are circular, stupa shape, jenna, varieties of things are in uh, small, small things. They are, uh, the uh, holy relics are kept inside a crystal casket and along with the holy, uh, rem holy remains, golden leaves, golden flowers, then coral reef, varieties of precious, small, small precious stones, semi-precious stones were also uh, deposited inside the relic uh, cascade. And they were again deposited, uh, uh, what to call, below the production of Sometime, some are inside the stupa. These were recovered and now on safe custody and display at Amaravati Site Museum. So this is very, very interesting. Ten relic caskets are recovered. Almost the Buddhist fraternity from the entire Southeast Asia or the Asia, they come, they pay homage to the holy relics with a lot of devotion. This is a, what we call very important find at Amravati Stupa. Next. Yes, now we really begin the story in the sense this is vertical. It helps us uh, uh, to estimate the archaeological and historical significance of Dhanya Kataka Amravati Stupa. And it was there, but it was rediscovered in 18th century and continued to be uh, further known during 19th and 20th, 20th centuries also. And now we, we can... Uh, uh, just begin the sequence, history in sequence, to know the history of Amaravati Stupa in sequence. Now you can locate in, in India and that is Andhra Pradesh. Within Andhra Pradesh we have what to call at the angle the Amaravati Stupa is located. Next one. Yes, Buddhism, for that matter, Buddhism reached Andhra Pradesh during the lifetime. There was a story because most of the Andhaka monks, they are called as Andhaka monks. The Andhaka or Andhaka monks reached Rajagraha when uh, Buddha was there. And again, at Sravasti also, they met uh, Lord Buddha and got the Dhamma. And Dhamma started spreading in 3rd century AD, when Asoka Maurya has sent missionaries, one Mahade, Mahadeva Thera was dispatched to this part of the country for spreading Buddha's Dhamma. And we also have that what we call uh, Asoka Maurya has also lent a huge support to, to Dhanikataka Amaravati, uh, where we have got evidence of Mauryan inscriptions there. Then Asoka's small pillar edict is also there. Next one. 
yes now we can see the great patronage by asoka on the right side you can see a, a, an image of uh, raya asoka it is from kanaganahalli in karnataka when they excavated a labeled sculpture of uh, asoka the great was recovered and uh, it belongs to uh, 2nd century ad with what we call raya asoka there is a day label also and why i am showing here is the asoka the great has lent his support for what to call elaborating this stupa during his lifetime as he did for many others he is credited with the construction of 84000 stupas to commemorate the greatest events of that uh, lord buddha has delivered 84000 discourses he wanted to uh, keep it uh, alive through the stupa so he built 84000 stupas as mentioned in asoka raja sutra uh, at seni's translation next one yes this is on the right side and left side is mahastupa at the moment we can see this much only because we are not supposed to to reconstruct as we got in the excavations it is preserved all around you can also see the uh, pillars of the railing and on the right side this is asokan edict so uh, it is a clear evidence that uh, asoka lent support to it one next one yes now as you enter as you enter the site you come across this is the first site at uh, amaravati stupa that you come across uh, a brick structure unfinished then what happens is all around there is a circumambulatory path at a height of 2 meters and you have got a, an ayaka platform there are uh, evidences of the broken stumps of five pillars then ayaka uh, platform was uh, encased with the limestone slabs and you can also see at the front side you can see granite huge pillars with the mauryan polish they were quarried from the river krishna transported here they got actually dressed in a proper shape and they were polished uh, uh, as if we can see your face on that it is known as mauryan polish which again attest the fact that uh, it was uh, the railing was erected during asokan times next next sir as the, this is asokan polish as an example how lustrous yes oh, yes next 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 yes in one of uh, the upright slabs erected during the asokan time we found here the asokan script so it also enshrines what does the, uh, the slab contains a small miniature drawing of a stupa with railing and bodhi vruksha with railing you can see you, it clearly reveals that uh, there was architecture of the stupa by 3rd century bc itself then people were also worshiping bodhi tree under which siddhartha became the buddha it was also encased uh, with a railing what to call it it gives uh, the amount of veneration that these people have given during 3rd century bc for both stupa as well as bodhi vruksha next yes a conjecture no if we go there what happens is as soon as we see in british museum london oh what a wonderful sculpture i want to see the site and you start coming over to amravati after coming to amravati when you are at the site you will be thoroughly discouraged on seeing what we call the amravati stupa in a very very small you cannot feel that it is a stupa it is just a brick platform but the british herself based on the stupa slabs they have reconstructed and not conjectured it is as it is they have reconstructed and when it is in its full phase of amara satavahana phase it looks like this the hemispherical mound and uh, on the top of the uh, pradakshina pada you have got all around beautiful sculptural panel on the top you have got a band of uh, what to call triratna symbols on the top you have got again floral decoration on the top of it you have got a stone box called harmika at the center you have got what to call a chatrashti to go hold the perusal because he is uh, the spiritual leader of the world 
then come to the bottom side at the um, vertical ground level you have got a stupa all as a railing all around and the entrances on four directions on all the four directions you have got five pillars those five pillars denote the birth of siddhartha the great departure from his kapila vastu then the enlightenment the first sermon and the passing away the mahaparinibbana of uh, lord buddha so this is what we call when it was there during which acharya nagarjuna stayed at dhani kataka it was looking like this and it was lit fully all around in almost all parts were illuminated with lamp henceforth it was called as the mound of the lands the deepala din in local language next yes this is again the conjectural view of sanchi stupa basing on that we can also view visualize how dhanya kataka looks like during those days this is only as an example for us next one yes this is kanagan halli why i am showing is that during this period shatavahana period only shimuka shatavahana was there but by that time uh, they didn't come over here the shatavahanas were uh, ruling from maharashtra only next 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 uh, this is an example next uh, uh, giving dana this is what we call is singh gautami putra shatakarna the real story of the shatavahana period how the buddhist stupa at dhanya kataka was uh, are renovated enlarged and cased with beautiful sculpture slabs under the supervision of next next under the supervision of uh, acharya nagarjuna you can now see gautami putra shatakarni on the coins they were recovered there gautami putra ignasri shatakarni coins were there next one please this is only to establish that uh, during this is an ahapana coins we also recovered the next 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 not necessary yes now kindly kindly hold it sir and i will take one moment acharya nagarjuna was great uh, systematizer of mahayana uh, philosophy as well as he is known for what to call a great master of madhyamika philosophy who composed suhrulika ratnavali mola madhyamika karika sunita taptati vigraha vyavartane and the penultimate work what we call pragna parmita hrudaya shastra when he was stationed at dhanya kataka he composed all those works and uh, again and during his tenure when he was staying at dhanya kataka it was mentioned in uh, the history of buddhism in india by lama taranada a 16th century book mentions that the amaravati or the dhanya kataka stupa was renovated enlarged encased decorated with beautiful sculptural panels under the direct supervision of acharya nagarjuna this is a very clear cut uh, information that we have got next bante yes now if you want to see do we really have any antiquarian remains there yes you have got a fortification mud fortification there outside amaravati stupa 1 km towards upstream of river krishna you find a huge mud fortification of the shatavahana times next one next one please yes what are those we got recovered from the stone beautiful sculptural panels one is upright then this is what to call roundel in between uh, arranged in between the railing so this is uh, the railing inside of the railing is decorated with beautiful sculptural panels and outside what happens is uh, with uh, just lotus flowers only medallions and here on the right side kindly find notice that uh, the uh, relic casket is worshiped by the nagas and all other people this is what to call worship of holy uh, relics of lord buddha with great devotion can you notice this is what to call a 3 meter dia small medallion which has got more than 30 sculptures and this is known as what to call the dynamic uh, phase of amaravati school of art and it excelled the rest of other schools known as gandhara school of art madhura school of art which flourished simultaneously from 1st century bc to 3rd century ad but amaravati school of art is uh, considered the best among the early indian schools of art by even the western art critics and art historians next 
Yes, this is what call you beautiful sculptural panels who recovered from Ravati Supa. Is that Siddhartha? Can you notice Siddhartha on um, what to call on encountering the four Nimitas? Uh, and uh, he sees, uh, uh, you all know that, so I am not looking at And he decided to depart from his house. And uh, before he depart, he goes to the bedroom of uh, Sodara. He sees the newly born, uh, what to call Rahula. And then he bids farewell. Then he moves out. This is known as what to call the movement when he started um, Mahabhi Nishkarmana. This is a very beautiful panel. You can see the, what to call the, the then architecture, everything. Next one. Yes, other things we come across are, again, worship. What are the things that we come across is many things, Rama, Grama, Stupa, and worshipped by elephants. And here, what we call is Buddha giving discourses to Buddhist monks and uh, other Buddhist monks coming over and meeting the Buddha in different panels. It belongs to Amaravati phase of art, the mature phase. Next one, next one. Yes, again, this is repeated. Kindly move to the next one, sir. Yes, again, you what are the other things that are because since the, during those times, um, there are uh, two books are available. One is that uh, uh, Lalita Vistara, then again, um, Buddha Charita by Ashwagosha. But copies are not available throughout the country. Then what they did was most of the story is connected to the Buddha and his previous lives as Jatakas and the contemporary life. These are the themes that they were depicted on the stones and uh, embedded to the stupa as well as inserted in between the railings. This is one such phase, what to call a Jataka story. Next. Yes, say one small panel. Can you notice that there are panels? One is that uh, Maya Devi's dream. Then Maya Devi giving birth to Siddhartha. Four Brahmas are uh, keeping one golden net to hold the baby to be born, etc. All these are just in one end of it uh, area. May they have occurred and what to call it? These started disseminating information on the holy life of. Siddhartha Gotama. Next. Yes, this is again, you can notice this is railing on the top. We call it as Vushnisha. Vushnisha, upright pillar. And this is the top portion of the railing. On that also, they cowed inside that what to call the day before Siddhartha departs. Again, Siddhartha's birth. And here, the forecast of Siddhartha after the Siddhartha's birth. So there are many, many, many such individual stories which go around the stupa. When you make a round, circumambulate the stupa, you come to know the whole biography of Siddhartha Gautama through the sculptures beautifully carved. Next. Yes, this is the great departure. You can notice that on the horse, Siddhartha is moving from his palace. And uh, what you call is, the sound shall not be, uh, what you call, heard by his wife and the small boy. These uh, yakshas are the demigods. They are holding their uh, hands so that the horse will move. Uh, on their hands only. This is very interesting. And Siddhartha is shown in human form. And this belongs to Mahayana phase. In Theravada phase, only you find horse only. No human representation of Siddhartha Gautama. But here it is Mahayana. And we can safely date it to uh, first, second century CAD. Next. Yes, this is what we call how the stupa looks like because we are seeing on the ruins. But uh, on the panels that they used to decorate all around the stupa in the miniature stupas, it looks like that it has an entrance. On either side, there are lines decorated on the top of the entrances. And as you go around, there is a railing. And at the center, you have got either Buddha image, either in seated posture or standing posture or giving discourse like that and on, at the top uh, you find all the five pillars denoting the great events of Siddhartha Gautama all around. There are many such stories of life, is, uh, life and mission of uh, Lord Buddha were there. This is very, very, very clue. Clue for estimating the grandeur of Mahasupa at Amaravati. Next one, please. Yes, this is again one more such panel. This is, uh, this represents the mature phase of uh, what to call 
द म्यूचुअल फेज ऑफ अमरावती स्तूपा नेक्स्ट 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 ये सेगेन सीरीज ऑफ मानुषी बुद्धा सर देयर बुद्ध वंश है वी कॉल इट ना वी हैव गॉट एट बुद्धास एंड द एट वन इज येट टू कम द बुद्ध हुम वी आर नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट इज द सेवेंथ वन मानुषी बुद्ध सिद्धार्थ गौतम एंड ऑल द एट आर देयर दे गॉट एनलाइटनमेंट अंडर वेरियस ट्रीज सो दिस इज ए स्मॉल पैनल इज रिकवर्ड नाउ इट इज इन ब्रिटिश म्यूजियम लंदन एंड ऑन द टॉप you can notice again a small register which was used to decorate one of the viharas there in at the center i will show you one is that ek uh, cb jataka is there then at the center you find a ferocious elephant is coming and it is again um, submitting itself to lord buddha because you know a small story devadatta cousin of siddhartha has uh, uh, enmity with the buddha he wanted to kill the buddha and become sanghanayaka and he tames an elephant and the elephant every day he gives some uh, drink and uh, there is a huge image of the buddha drawn on a uh, cloth and he let it loose so it will go hit it every day and he made such practice continuously one day when the buddha was actually going for alms in rajagriha he let it uh, loose and he show the elephant by name nalagiri attacks he started attacking attacking goes near close to siddhartha and finally when it reaches the buddha on seeing the calm serene holy uh, personality of the buddha it subdues itself it actually submits itself it really didn't do any harm this is a wonderful story that uh, you know what a message that we got is we shall be away from unwholesome thoughts next one yes there are again same stories repeated na as i said earlier kindly this is coping stone next one yes this is gautami putra shatakarni who was responsible for enlarging and uh, the stupa enlarging and uh, decorating it under the sukha because the gautami putra shatakarni was contemporary to acharya nagarjuna this is one panel identified with uh, uh, the pattern of the stupa next first century ad he he ruled as yes, again gautami putra shatakarni and there is a panel which was counted at sanchi also there next one yes gautami putra shatakarni ka coins were recovered there at many places next one next one please yes this is actually his own inscription gautami putra shatakarni's inscription at nasik what we mean to say is this is a correlation uh, that he extended patronage to at nasik also he excavated next one next one excavated a cave it is his mother's inscription gautami balasiri's inscription which was recovered from sanati in karnataka which says that uh, she also encouraged buddhism next one yes this is the cave that he excavated for buddhist monks at nasik it is uh, which means that he also extended for uh, uh, stupas on plains and uh, in the hilly areas he support he extended his support for the monks these caves were used as rainy retreats during the rainy season uh, the rainy retreat this year um, begins on i think 2nd august so this is one of the rainy retreats what we call is vasa vasa and uh, this was uh, created by gautami putra shatakarni in first century ad next 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 i wrote a book on gautami putra shatakarni next one please and there was a film in uh, telugu he is the matney idol he himself acted as next one sir next one sir yes he there is a film on gautam putra shatakarni in which amaravati amaravati stupa the phase of flourishing state of buddhism was also filmed and now recently for the benefit of the current generation this film really helped in what we call reconnecting andhra people with the buddhism next yes again this is repeated one next one this is the railing outside next one Yes, this is inside. So beautifully carved. Inside, when we take a parikrama or pradakshna pada, and there will be local guides. There are known as jataka bhanakas. They will reveal or uh, whatever is the local guides will give the stories, explain to the visitors, so that people will be informed of the life of Siddhartha Gautam and his previous lives. Next one. Next one. These are uprights. 
railing contains uprights and crossbars. Next one. Some are repeated kindly done. Yes. A beautiful bull sculpture was recovered in pieces and bits. It was molded. Can you notice that such a beautiful art flourished during Shatavana period? And this represents uh, Shakya Vrushava. Buddha has got uh, various epithets among which Shakya Simha, Shakya Vrushava. This denotes the presence of uh, Siddhartha in what we call an uh, in non-human form. Next one. Next one. Not necessary. Gautam Putra, Ignisri, Shatakarnals. And from here, from Dhanikat Kamaravati only, Buddhism uh, reached other parts of the world, Southeast Asian countries and other parts. Next one. Through trade and whatever it may be. Next one. Next, next, next. These are the countries what to call is embraced these things. And uh, when uh, Honorable Prime Minister visited uh, Amaravati, uh, I took, uh, I stood a chance to put up an exhibition for him and explain the Amaravati uh, and the archaeological significance of Amaravati and Dhanikataka Stupa. These are some of the things. Soon after the Shatvahanas, the area was ruled by another dynasty called Ikshwakus. They ruled for 100 years. They also extended their patronage. We all know that uh, Sri Parvata Vijayapuri at Nagarjuna Konda was the capital city of the Ikshwakus. Along with Sri Parvata Vijayapuri Nagarjuna Konda, they also extended their support to Dhanikataka Amaravati, where the mature phase of Amaravati School of Art was uh, um, flourished here and seen in many panels. During the renovations, they removed the Shatavahana panels and uh, uh, decorated with uh, Ikshwaku panels. Next one. Yes, this is, as you go, this is all Ikshwaku times. Third century AD, as I said, after the Shatavahanas, after Racharya Nagarjuna, it also underwent renovation. And during that renovation, they replaced the existing ones. And now you can see smaller version of railing. Next. Yes, this is this belongs to what to call the Ikshvaku phase. Full 3rd century AD. Ka, there are certain panels recovered from the site at uh, uh, Amravati. Next. Ekshwaku phase, 3rd century AD. Yes, this is again. Can you notice? It represents no Siddhartha on the horse. Horse is moving out of Kapilavastu. It denotes the departure, the great departure, Mahabhanishkamana, and it belongs to the Theravada phase where Mahayana, the, the, Mahayana was not at all there in Amaravati by that time. Before Mahayana, we have got a phase Theravada. We also has art panels of Theravada phase, 1st century BC. It, it belongs to 1st century BC. Next one. Next, there are many stories, etc. And uh, worships, or how people look like that. All those things are there in the panels of railing. Next one. Yes, again, this is the departure. The day before Siddhartha, his father wants, uh, ha, ha, anyhow, I, I shall not allow him. So he brought all the um, beautiful people uh, so that uh, he arranged a beautiful party. In spite of that, he was never convinced of all these worldly pleasures. But he wanted to go for searching truth. The truth is the root cause for suffering and also wanted to know the truth for suffering pervading all over the world and he wanted to give a solution for that he wanted to move this is the day before of Mahavinishkamana. Next. Next, next, next. Pallava period. During the Pallava period also it served a seat of power but the Pallavas never extended their support to what we call uh, Amaravati Stupa. They never extended because they were strange Buddhist. Uh, not Buddhist. Yes, Puyang Sang, after uh, 6th century, in 7th century AD, in 640 AD, um, the world famous renowned Chinese Buddhist traveler monk uh, uh, Acharya Puyang Sang has visited Dhanya Kataka. He mentioned in his writing as Tenakachaka, that is Dhanya Kataka. He visited in 639 40. He stayed there for an year. He noticed that uh, there were many. Hundreds of Buddhist temples were in ruins. And uh, he mentioned that Suhru Leka was every day taught in the schools. Suhru Leka, written by Acharya Nagarjuna, was taught in the schools. And his reports give us the uh, state of flourishing of Buddhism or 
the waning of buddhism during 7th century ad next one yes again what happened was during the eastern chalukyas that is 7th and 8th centuries there is no buddhism by that time vaishnavism or brahmanical faith started gaining ground every king queen nobles military generals all wanted to construct a temple hundreds thousands of temples started coming up and no patronage to buddhism so buddhist monks resorted only to viharas there is no support so no new takers of buddhism in spite of that it continued and very interestingly and during the course of excavations we thought we recovered more than 12 small sculptures of uh, vajrayana phase of buddhism tara manjushri then heruka uh, vajradhara etc all those small small images of the vajrayana phase were also recovered which reveals the fact that dhannikata kamaravati was a flourishing center for dhanya kataka do you know it is also known as dharani kota dharani means the creed symbols uh, are of the vajrayana phase where thousands were prepared in the form of uh, terracotta uh, tablets and they were distributed to other parts hence it is known as dharani kota the fort of the dharanis dharanis are the um, mantras of the vajrayana phase next yes this is a tara sculpture a vajrayana sculpture now it is in british museum london 8th century ad that means that buddhism flourished here still but not on that scale next one yes these are some of the things that we encountered even you can you can see marichi sculpture is also there please maitreya nada is there many such sculptures were recovered of the vajrayana phase next one yes this is the current state what happens now i want actually uh, yes the temple was built only in 9th century ad up to that point of time there was only mahastupa only buddhism flourished ah uh, from 9th century ad onwards 10th century onwards the tamravati temple was built and what happens was flourishing side by side but it gained maximum support from the kings and queens the temple and the stupa lost its what to call the prime glory once it held next next sir only one or two next next this is temple next one yes this is very interesting no 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 previous this is very interesting this is one of the ayaka stambhas that is the great four noble pillars recovered from the stupa was installed in the temple and worshiped in the name of uh, shivaling it is it happened in all the panch five pancharamas in andhra pradesh were the same things five pillars were taken to five different places and renamed it as pancharamas arama is a buddhist word and saivites took it and they started worshiping it as pancharama at daksharama bhirama bhimarama kumara arama arama is a term associated with buddhism arama is nothing but the monastery and this is the phase in which what to call saivism started appropriating buddhist sites i am not telling against anybody's sentiment to hurt no it is a historical fact next yes this is what you come across na now uh the stupa started waning out slowly and st- temple started gaining huge support from all uh, sections of the society next 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 uh, yeah, uh even the kota dynasty this is very interesting there was one minor dynasty that ruled in 12th century ad which extended patronage equally to stupa as well as to uh, the temple it says that the inscription says that stupam atyunnatam yatra nana chitra suchitritam the stupa is so grandeur by the time it was decorated with nana chitra suchitritam that is it is decorated with hundreds of panels of beautiful sculptures the inscription dated to 1182 reveals the fact next one that buddhism was also flourishing side by side next next it is all the modern thing next one next one please uh next kakate nenashi during that period what happened one interesting incident happened in 1344 when the kakateya phase was out 1344 the phase was under it was under the rule of the reddis of kondavidu during that phase yes 
during that phase very interesting thing happened one stavira monk one senior elder monk came from sri lanka his name is uh, uh, dharma kirti he came from gadaladeniya in sri lanka and he left there an inscription that when he visited dhanikat kamaravati the two storied shrine of lord buddha is in ruins and he renovated it with his own money brought from sri lanka very interesting uh, incident this piece of uh, evidence or record gives us you know, valuable information that even in 14th century amaravati stupa was in existence in its full uh, glory that is what we call the last evidence of the amaravati after that amaraeshwara stupa after that only temple nothing until it was rediscovered in 1797 by colonel kalin mekanji when he started the entire site was being demolished damaged with the ignorance that it doesn't belong they don't know that it belongs to buddhist stupa there was actually a hori past of buddhism they don't know simply freely available bricks are available there he wanted to bring it and construct new sites only so this is the story of amaravati that which has its beginning 4th century bc there there was a city uh, on par with other cities of india it flourished like a janapada like the great 16 janapadas of northern india and buddhism has its holy beginning uh, during uh, prayer to asoka and asoka extended its support satavahanas acharya nagarjuna stayed there even after satavahanas yakshwaku supported it after that there was no royal support but it continued to receive patronage from the traders artisans uh, households etc and it continued uh, to be a place of uh, uh, worship for theravada mahayana and vajrayana independently and simultaneously there were more than 100 shrines as uh, huyan song who, when he visited it in 7th century and by 14th century it was in state of sad uh, preserve in it is in sad state of preservation for which the sri lankan monk has responded for renovating it with his own money thanks to uh, dharmakirti mahastavira of sri lanka thank you thank you so much sir now we can close the uh, slide presentation sir uh, any queries from chat box uh, it is open thank you so very much professor reddy for this Thank profound you, talk on the story of Amaravati Stupa. I'm sure all of our Dhamma friends around the world benefited today. We will now take up your questions and we encourage you to post your questions in simple language on the Dhamma USA YouTube channel. So here we have some questions. Uh, Welcome, Bhante. From Dulani Gunasekar. Oh. So is the Amaravati Stupa still in existence today in India? It would be a blessing to visit such a historical site. Yes, Gunasekara uh, sir. It is actually Amaravati Stupa is there, but it is not in its full glory. We can see the remains of it up to two meters height, and it was not decorated with the slabs as we had it in during the satavahana times 2000 years ago all the casing slabs that used to decorate the stupa structure are in either uh, uh, government museum chennai or in british museum london but the site exists even still today we can go visit it and holy relic caskets are there inside the local site museum and good number of sculpture panels are also there just you can visit uh, this holy and historical site you are most welcome um, gunasekara sir so we now have uh, another question by dulani gunasekara again uh, the inscriptions in the nasik kava are more familiar to ancient greek letters 
what was the language that was used at the time to inscribe those inscriptions onto a slab? Yes, uh, it is a very interesting question. What happened was, as rightly mentioned, uh, it was uh, what we call the center, the area close to Nasik and the area towards the east is called Ujjain area, was under the control of uh, uh, the Sekas, earlier Bactrian Greeks. But by the time, the Shatavahana times, it was under the Sekas and Gautam Putra Shatakarna, Shatakarni defeated Seka, Nahapana, and he annexed it into Shatavahana phase. So that what happens was, it became, then they maintained matrimonial relations with the Sekas. Then uh, Gautam Putra Shatakarna became emperor of the whole of uh, Dakshinapada. And uh, in one inscription, it says that, uh, uh, Tri Samudra Toya Pitavahanasa. That is, whose horses have drank the waters of all the seas of uh, uh, Dakshinapatha, three seas on peninsular India, no? which means that it was under the hegemony of uh, Chatavahanas and Nasik was excavated by Gautam Putra Chatakarni. And during his tenure, or the Chatavahana phase, the script is known as uh, Brahmi and the language used is known as Prakrit. So the entire inscription which we, I have shown you uh, next to Nasik Kev is in Prakrit language and Brahmi script, native India. Thank you for those uh, answers, uh, Professor Reddy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There are more questions uh, to be asked. Please, please. So how yes. is Buddhism in Andhra Pradesh today? At the moment, at the moment Bhante? Y yes. Yeah. This uh, thing is that uh, um, what happened was there is no continuity of Buddhism. There are no people who follow Buddhism. And it was only... We all know that Buddhism was revised in 19th century by Anagarika Dhammapala for the first time in 1869 around. He came from Sri Lanka, established Mahabodhi society at uh, Bodh Gaya. Then he fought with the British, redeemed the Mahabodhi temple. Then it was the real beginning establishment of uh, uh, what you call Mahabodhi society and it has its branches people started looking at, oh, what a wonderful holy past we have got with the Buddhist culture. Then various centers were uh, established in some parts of India. When what happened was in Andhra Pradesh, who people know about Buddhism, but there are no practicing Buddhists. But in 79, 1979, one Ananda Bhante has established a small Vihara in Srikendrabad area known as Sai Nagar. There we call it as Ananda Buddha Vihara, 1974. After that, what happened was that Ananda Buddha Vihara was located in a very small uh, house of two rooms. But one Upasaka, engineer DZ, he was a former DGP. He was a convinced Buddhist. He really took it over. He renovated that particular thing into a real Buddhist place. Then after that, he acquired three acres of land from government in Mahendra Hills. And you can just hit it. Mahabodhi Buddha Vihara in Sikandrabad is the best, well-maintained, beautiful structure has come up every day. There are 40 Buddhist monks living there every day, giving discourses on a calendar of events are organized. And for that matter, uh, he... And an, um, only established, Anjaneri De Upasaka Ji has established a beautiful Buddhavanam in Nagarjan Sagar to propagate Buddhist culture. So now at the moment, Buddhist society of India is very now um, dynamic in both the states, Telugu states. In Andhra Pradesh, Buddhists are there now. What happens is the followers of Ambedkar, also the followers of Buddhism, now, we have a sizable population of Buddhists in coastal Andhra Pradesh as well as in Telangana. Now, it is flourishing. It is flourishing.
yes they are hospitable hospitality because the hospitality or the vinaya comes from buddhism the impact of buddhism is still seen in andhra pradesh and telangana because uh, they learned many things and they are not harsh in their behavior they are very polite and uh, the vinaya part is seen next thank you sir can you explain uh, about the nagarjuna konda site a little bit more there was a sri lankan temple there yes sir it is a very interesting question next time my next talk would be on nagarjuna konda but here i will tell you uh, nagarjuna konda is the hill of acharya nagarjuna it was named after nagarjuna acharya nagarjuna because where he spent his last days so the hill uh, what to call close to river krishna is known as nagarjuna konda then what happened was uh, government uh, government wanted to construct a dam across river krishna it is known as nagarjuna sagar dam and that reservoir inundation of the reservoir caused to submerge a huge archaeological site at nagarjuna konda and between 1954 to 60 excavations conducted excavations were conducted and revealed existence of 30 buddhist monastic establishment at one place and at one place what happened was there are 30 buddhist monastic establishment during those days people from sri lanka monks have uh, are continuously visiting nagarjuna konda sri parvata vijayapuri the then name and they were visiting they were suffering under the sun and rain one upasaki upasaka upasika by name bodhisiri she sha hare who are they they are coming from sri lanka why why they are under the sun and rain there is no patronage there is no proper accommodation for them then she started no 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 they should be given hospitable hospitality we i will build a vihara for them then she started she selected an area called dhammagiri sulla dhammagiri and at that site she built a beautiful vihara called singala vihara or simhala vihara where we have got a beautiful monastery pavilion viharas then uh, buddha stupa and chaitya stupa what a wonderful thing beautiful uh, structure is there so simhala vihara is there dateable to 3rd century ad 1700 years we have got a connection in between sri lanka and andhra that is the thing next no sir it was not the britishers uh, demolished it is only the local people the local chieftain has demolished and it was the british who rescued uh, it and saved it from uh, what to call damage thanks to the britishers in this situation so next uh, question is Can you please explain a little Hussan Sagar like with the statue it's a very ancient with the statue Yes yes it was a very interesting story there was actually a chief minister by name NT Ramarao he was a film actor and much a very popular matin idol he entered into politics in 1982 and became chief minister of Andhra Pradesh in 1983 and he is what we call a rationalist so most of the rationalist will connect to buddhism automatically because buddha is the um, first uh, rationalist then so he wanted to construct a huge statue of the buddha erect a huge statue of buddha at nagarjuna sagar but uh, he changed his idea when he visited new york as chief minister he was taken to uh, what to call that uh, statue of liberty and at the statue of liberty only he got an idea that why can't we also have a statue of the buddha in the water body called hussein sagar in hyderabad it was way back in 1986 then he came over here and then wanted to uh, establish a beautiful sculpture of buddha and uh, uh, he employed the sculptors and they excavated they, they, uh quarried a huge stone and that stone now do you know the height of the buddha statue is 53 feet 18 meters 
and below it is a 35 feet pedestal. So all put together, it is 85 feet, beautiful on the lake, Hussein Sagar Lake. And um, the story began in 1989. It took two years to carve. In 89 and 90, they shifted to Hussein Sagar Lake, uh, what you call is now NTR Gardens now. Then it, the, it was being transported to erect it on a natural rock boulder, which is known as Gibraltar Rock in Hussein Sagar, amidst Hussein Sagar. And during its transportation, the, uh, the statue drowned in the water. It upside down. The vehicle uh, got upside down and the statue fall in the uh, waters and it stayed for two years in the water. The Buddha statue was two years in the water. And finally, in 1992, it was rescued and re-erected on Gibraltar Rock in Hussein Sagar. This is a very interesting story. Very interesting story. Credit goes to N.T. Ramarao, the then Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. And when Mr. Chennaredi was Chief Minister, government changed. He got the credit of re, uh, what to call, uh, erecting it on the stone. Now, it became a beautiful tourist spot every day. Thousands of people are visiting Buddha and at least they are they are connected to Buddhism. Oh, Siddhartha Gautama, he became the Buddha. He gave that message. It is useful for each and everybody. Buddhism is not a religion. It is a way of life and it really clears the dust in eyes of all of us. What a beautiful man he is. He is not at all a man. He is a great human being, Lokotara, and he is, hence, he is considered as light of Asia. Thank you for that answer, Professor Reddy. Uh, following this question about the statue, uh, where is the ancient statue located in modern day? Are these sites relatively close to Bodh Gaya or farther away within India? Uh, there are throughout India, there are many such statues, not that much big. They are life size statues, are there in Nalanda, there in uh, Lalitagiri, Ratnagiri, and many more sites. If you go to Ajanta Caves, if you go to Elora, you have beautiful life size and more than life size images of ancient Buddha sculptures ranging indeed from uh, 2nd century AD to uh, 10th, 11th century AD. And if you go to some of the uh, sites in um, Bihar and UB, you also got beautiful sculptures. But here what happened in Tamil Nadu? In Tamil Nadu, you have got uh, more than 80 Buddhist sites where Buddha sculptures are there, whether in the seated, in uh, uh, what you call Vakhyana Mudra, varieties of Buddha sculptures are there. Nagapatna was a wonderful flourishing Buddhist site continued from 1st century AD to 14th century AD. What I mean to say here is, in each and everywhere, Buddhism flourished. Hundreds of sites are there. Thing is that government is not at all giving importance as it is giving important to uh, the Hindu temples. That is anyhow. But it now became people's faith. Now people started encouraging it. People are visiting Viharas. Now erecting huge statues of Buddha. Now there is a wave, a movement that is taking, gaining ground in entire Indian context. And uh, uh, for Bhante, I am telling you one information vulnerable that in Nagarjuna Konda Museum, we have got nine feet, three inch beautiful Buddha image of uh, Sri Parvata Vijayapuri. Nine feet, three inches, so beautiful. And in most of the Sri Lankan Buddha, Buddha images are uh, what we call Andhra images only. From here, artisans were taken and uh, they modeled it there. So there is close affinity in between. So throughout there are many Buddha sites and um, uh, we are compiling directory of Buddhist sites of India. Thank you for that question, Professor. Uh, answer to that question, Professor Reddy. Next question is, is there any differences between Indian Buddhist history and Theravada Buddhist history, or are they both comparatively the same? Yes, one uh, thing. Uh, Theravada is that uh, they believe what the Buddha taught, original, that is the authentic uh, utterances of the Buddha they follow in letter and spirit, 
what you call the sutras of the buddha the vinay pitaka of the buddha the dhamma pitaka of the buddha all those buddha vachana they follow as it is without any changes or commentaries what happened after that it is known as theravada theras are elders who follow uh, what buddha said as it is without any they don't want to change to comment upon etc as it is they follow it is known as theravada buddhism which flourished up to first century bc only end of first century bc we know that a new current has entered into buddhist history of india from the north western frontier and in mathura and in southern part of india a new current has come mahasanghikas those mahasanghikas has give a new name for their way of approach which is known as mahayana that is in theravada only the people or the monks will get relieved of the cycle of birth and death that they only get nibbana for themselves and it is confined only to individuals but in mahayana the concept is wider the base is widened and they uh, they uh, strive for the nirvana of all the living beings not for themselves for themselves along the at the same time for other living beings also hence it is known as mahayana and uh, what uh, the very first question uh, there is no difference means the, the first buddhism is known as the first phase of buddhism up to first century ad Uh, from the lifetime of the buddha after uh, demise of the buddha up to first century bc the phase of buddhism that flourished in india and southeast asian countries is known as theravada buddhism only and it became the first part of indian history of buddhism then the next phase is mahayana from first century ad onwards continued and from fourth century ad onwards another new current has come known as vajrayana wherein all the mandala worship mystic mysticism then divinities were introduced in this phase otherwise buddhism will never could have never survived with the contemporary religious trends in india that was the historical phase in which three phases of buddhism flourished in india thank you sir thank you for those answers professor it seems there's uh no more questions actually so with that uh we can conclude today's dhamma sharing and we look forward uh to inviting uh to uh we look forward to meeting with you more uh in during future insightful dhamma sharings in the coming weeks let's Thank keep you. our palms together close to our hearts and pay respect to professor reddy thank you may you always be well happy and healthy professor sivanagi reddy thank by you the power, by the hand yes i honor sila bhavana activities that we have all performed during our thank lifetime you, during thank our you. whole course thank of samsara become one united power may it be shared with all celestial beings all may all wonderful celestial beings including the brahmas and devas and all celestial beings receive this merit share this merit and be well happy and healthy wherever they are may all your departed relatives including your preceptors parents and all other rest, uh, ancestors also receive this merit and be well happy and healthy and safe wherever they are may all of us be able to live peacefully comfortably and with good health may all of us and all sentient beings be able to attain the supreme bliss of nibbana the absolute peace and happiness at the end of samsara thinking thus please keep your palms together close to your heart and say sadhu 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 Thank you, most venerable Bhante. Thank you, Aranda Ji. Thank you, all other participants. Thank you. Thank you.